Thank you all for gathering into the warmth of this place, into the warmth of God's presence and presence of our community. And thank you, Melora. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Mark. And Anthony over there on the congas. I'm Reverend Marty. We're going to start with a song of welcome. Come and find the quiet center. Uh, if you want to look at the music, it's in the little black book, 2128, but it's also be on the screen. So uh, feel free to stand if you feel so moved. <coughs> Good morning. I'm Mike Rieger and welcome one and all to Christ Church this first Sunday of Lent. Although it's a very somber season and our study uh, topic for the season is forgiveness this week in many uh, venues uh, in the church and homes that are in your bulletin. Uh, it is also a season we know with joy the coming of the resurrection and Easter. So let us worship today with that sense of joy. Even though it's the first Sunday of March, it's uh, a rather cold Sunday, and I think some of you have been wondering, Siri, what is the temperature now? Yes, but in our sanctuary here on the corner of Fifth Avenue and State Street in Troy, it's marvelously warm. Our hearts are open, our communion table is open to all, and Curtis uh, Dunnigan has uh, kindly provided us with refreshment and uh, uh, fellowship for our coffee hour after church. So it's certainly not cold inside. If you're worshiping with us for the first time or have not been here in a while, We'd like you to give one of your, our welcome packets. We're delighted you chose to worship with us this morning. After the service, all are invited to stay for coffee hour in Wesley Hall, out the door here in front and to the right for coffee and refreshments, including items for people with food allergies. We do the offering a little differently here than maybe you're used to from other churches. We don't pass the offering plates during the service, but if you're so moved, Feel free to put something in the plate at any time during the service. Our plates are in the back and at the front. Uh, announcements, as I mentioned, we're starting a new study this week for Lent, forgiveness, finding peace through letting go. Class times are in the bulletin and books are for sale in the back uh, at our welcome area. 
Also, Marilyn Bloom uh, has uh, indicated to me offerings for altar flowers next month, uh, next month on March 19 and 26 are open. Please see Marilyn and, or in the church office. Marilyn's back there. And uh, also, uh, let us not forget our spaghetti dinner. Friday, March 24, we have flyers in the back and I understand the church office uh, has tickets. Uh, it is our annual benefit for Troy organizations who are doing the good work and we are helping them of Joseph's House, the Troy YWCA, the Troy Area United Ministries, and Unity House. I call your attention to the other announcements in the bulletin and everyone please sign in on the pad in the pews so we can stay in touch. Christine McDonald will share a March mission moment at this time. Good morning. If you don't know me, I'm Christine McDonald. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Social Action and Missions team here at Christ Church. And I am here to draw your attention to the insert in the bulletin. As Mike mentioned, we're preparing for our spaghetti dinner at the end of this month, which we have dubbed March Mission Madness. And you'll see on the other side of that in your bulletin that there's a description of the uh, four organizations that we are raising funds for. And today I'm going to talk to you about our first organization, which is Joseph's House and Shelter, with a little help with some visuals and the tech booth. So March Mission Madness, we're not talking basketball. We're talking about picking your favorite um, helping agency here in Troy or you can like all four um, and hopefully donate some money and also some time um, to these great organizations. As I mentioned, our first um, agency that we're highlighting today is Joseph's House and Shelter. Um, and if Dave will bring up the next picture, you're probably all familiar with the big red um, brick building, which is um, the actual shelter itself. Technical difficulty. There it is. Um, and here at the shelter, if you'll show us the next um, slide, Dave, back in 2016, um, they housed 641 guests for 15,649 nights uh, throughout the entire year. And that's 403 adults and 238 children. We don't often think about um, the homeless children because we're not used to seeing them sleeping out in the streets. But Joseph's House does a great job of making life seem as normal as possible. And Dave will show you some of the pictures of the interiors. Um, of course, the shelter's divided into uh, a family section and, and a single section with areas to cook areas to eat as a group. Um, this is a picture of some of the bedrooms. Uh, Ronald McDonald House had donated some bunk beds and trundle beds uh, to the shelter recently. Um, they do activities like taking kids out to bowling. And I know a couple of our wonderful members here, Mark and Joyce, run a movie night over at Joseph's House, complete with popcorn on a regular basis. Here's a group of staff delivering some Easter baskets. Um, last year. But there's other parts of Joseph's House, um, and another big one is permanent supportive housing. Last year they served 180 people in this capacity, so not just providing a short-term solution of getting somebody off the street, but taking people with long-term uh, mental illness issues, long-term history of homelessness, and providing them with not just housing, but the meals, advocacy services, help with maintaining an apartment, things that get them into permanent housing, and then the services to help keep them there. And that happens, if you'll see in the next pictures, at the Hill Street Inn, which you might have passed here downtown, and also up in Lansingburg, which is the next picture at the Lansing Inn. Another big um, way that Joseph's House helps is doing outreach to people who are out living in public spaces. 
Um, and right now they are working with about 62 people who um, have been out living on the streets. And Dave can keep scrolling through those pictures. Um, and we've all seen uh, th this kind of situation even in our own um, garden where somebody is living outside. And through their outreach po program in the past 12 months, Joseph's House has been able to decrease uh, street homelessness by 33%. So they're really doing a lot of great work, including when you see this blue flag on the outside of the building. Does anybody know what that means when the blue flag is out at Joseph's House? Code blue, that's code blue. And Dave will show you on the next slide. That means that it's, if it's 32 degrees or colder, there are no limits as to how many people can come into the shelter. So normally they have about 40 people. Um, that's what they call capacity. Um, during cold blue, it has swollen to as high as 77. And that means that people who wouldn't normally be um, able to come in, like somebody who is currently uh, intoxicated or high, um, is able to come in to the shelter. Now when it gets that full, this is a picture of some of the very homey wooden chairs and tables, just like anybody's dining room at home, but these all fold up and get pushed out of the way so that they can fit more people into the shelter. And when they're even full that way, that's when in from the cold comes into play. And in from the cold is um, finding places like here at Christ Church in the next picture. You might recognize our fellowship hall upstairs. And at, is it three other churches in Troy that from the months of mid-November to mid-April take in, well, for the past few years, it's been 10 men. Starting this year, it's um, 15 men and women who then have a warm place to sleep at night at the church and then go back to the shelter during the day for services. This happens to be a, a gratuitous picture of the RPI hockey team for my husband who's up there running <laughs> the PowerPoint, but they were serving as volunteers uh, at, Joseph ha at Joseph's house. There's a lot of ways that you can give your time. As I said, we hope you give some money, but if, um, in addition, we hope that you give some time to go over there, you can do um, volunteering for In From The Cold to be one of the people that's just sleeping on one of those cots overnight with the men and women to be there as a host or hostess um, and form relationships, get to know them. Um, you can go in and you can cook meals, you can cook meals and deliver meals, you can serve as an advocate, you can do fundraising like those very cold people in the snow during the uh, winter walk for homelessness. So I hope that you will consider um, supporting Joseph's House in some way, including during March Mission Madness. And remember that by buying tickets to the spaghetti dinner, you can vote with your ticket when you arrive to eat um, where you want the profits that's remaining from your, the purchase of your ticket to which um, organization or organizations you would like uh, the profits to go to. So next week we'll be talking about a uh, different organization. Um, thank you for your attention. Oh, and uh, we're moving on now to our next hymn, which is Lord, who throughout these 40 days, and you can find that in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 269 or on your screens. <laughs> Lord, who throughout these forty days for us to pass and pray, us with thee to mourn our sins and close by thee.
Our scriptures from Luke 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus returned from the Jordan River, full of the Holy Spirit, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. There he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and afterwards Jesus was starving. The devil said to him, Since you are God's son, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied, It is written, people won't live by live only by bread. The, next the devil led him to a high place and showed him in a single instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said, I will give you this whole domain and all the glory of all these kingdoms. It's been entrusted to me, and I can give it to you. I can give it to anyone I want. Therefore, if you will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, You will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil brought him into Jerusalem and stood at the highest point of the temple. He said to him, Since you are God's son, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and they will take you up in their hands so you won't hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus answered, It has been said, Don't test the Lord your God. After finishing every temptation, the devil departed from him until the next opportunity. Testing, testing, testing. A lot of testing going on. I hear uh, who all is here from Sage. I know that the midterms are coming right up, and some of you RPI folks too. Um, time to hit the books. A little studying. Um, a lot of testing going on in our public schools as well as we know that's been going on for many, many years. And uh, we were over. Uh, Emily Miller and I went over at school too. The other day, we have a special relationship with School 2, which is the closest public school to here. It's just about a mile and a half um, up the road here. And it's a school that's in a very distressed neighborhood, and it's been in receivership for the last year and a half, which means that the superintendent, um, Mr. Carmelo, uh, Troy superintendent, is the receiver. So it has to keep, we have to make special reports to him. And I'm on the community engagement team, and the reports have all been good. So the testing is, you know, we hate testing, but for whatever reasons, we're passing the test. So that's a good thing. Testing, testing, testing. Our graphic today is, uh, you might remember, some of you have been around for a while. I wasn't here at the time. Um, we used to have a climbing wall at the block party. We have a block party every year, this congregation does, in September to welcome everybody back from the summer. And uh, we used to, before our insurance company got nervous about it, uh, speaking of testing, um, you know, kids used to enjoy kind of testing their physical strength, testing their coordination and their flexibility. And, you know, it's almost like a trust walk. Do you remember trust walks back in the 70s? That was a long time ago. <laughs> it's good to test ourselves sometimes and see what we can do. Um, the Bible is full of God testing people's faith, isn't it? We can think of lots of stories of Abraham and Sarah, very old people being tested, not at a time in your life when you think about doing something entirely new. Go and leave your family and your house and go to a land that I shall show you. Or Moses and the people of Israel being tested over and over. That's really the background for this story that Nancy and Ron just read. Moses, Moses and leading the people through the, the wilderness after they had been liberated from slavery in Egypt and they still had a long, long ways to go and double back and twists and turns and for two generations in the desert uh, testing, being tested for their faith. Today we start a new series for Lent on forgiveness. It can be also a test of faith, can't it? When we run into those uh, tough times in our relationships with God, with our 
intimate partners, with our coworkers and acquaintances, with our larger nation and world. Uh, in concentric circles, we're going to be looking at these important relationships. So today is our relationship with God. But um, the book we're using is by Adam Hamilton. I, some of you have also read it before. And Mike mentioned it's in the back if you want to buy a copy today and get started. Um, but one thing that Adam talks about in the very first chapter is about those six words that we all have to know. And you're going to be tested on these words. Do you know the six words? Go ahead and show us that video. <clears throat> Did you find the DVD video? can survive without you knowing how to practice and how to ask for appropriately forgiveness. No society can hold together. It has no future unless the people in that society learn how to forgive one another. And in our own lives, we'll be friendless unless we learn how to both give and receive forgiveness. There are six words you need to know in order to be successful in life. Two three-word phrases. The first is, I am sorry. No successful person became successful without knowing how to say that. And the other three, I forgive you. I am sorry and I forgive you. These words need to not only spring from your lips with some regularity, but they need to be experienced in your heart in order for you to find the life that God intends for you to have. Now, this week I was reading... We're going to hear more from Adam in the next few weeks, but those six words, three... Two three-word phrases are very important for us to know how to say from not only with our family and friends and intimate partners and co-workers and anyone with whom you want to have a good relationship, but also with God. And that can be a test, can it, where um, we need to be able to say to God, I am sorry, sometimes. And there are even places in scripture where God says it to us. Where God changes God's mind and repents. We have some places in scripture where God sincerely um, wants to do something differently than before. So there are lots of tests. Um, and also, of course, I forgive you is the other six word. So there are two things in life. We'll be looking at this over and over again this next six weeks that are really, really real. One of them is sin. We really do hurt each other sometimes on purpose. And the other one is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a real force in the universe. And that's the great news. It's a real force of release and freedom and liberation and new life. Those two real things are going to be capturing our attention for the next several weeks. So there's tests involved in this. And God tests us over and over to see what we're made of, to refine us, to make us stronger. because Refined metal is stronger than the original. Um, there are different tests of faith at different ages. This testing that Jesus went through that Nancy and Ron read to us um, was a test of a young man. He was very wet behind the ears. He had just come up out of the River Jordan. He would just been baptized. And the Holy Spirit was with him. And he was clear. And he was excited about his ministry. And God had said to him, you are my beloved child. I've got great work for you to do. Here, get out in the wilderness and hone your call. So right away the Spirit sends him forth on a test. It's kind of like a young man's, young person's vision quest. You know, where you have to test yourself to see what you're made of. There's a rhythm in the life of faith. Um, we wouldn't be a person of faith if we didn't have some times of closeness and just warmth and sureness about God's presence and those kinds of times make us feel so high and so loved and so uh, full of, of joy 
but there also are times in everyone's faith, and it seems like people of faith get these even more than people who don't claim faith, when your faith is tested, when you feel uh, confused, and you feel like you're wandering, and you feel like everything you believed before is just, mm, you're not sure about that, and uh, you feel like God might be very far away, and you know, wandering around in the wilderness, and the people of Israel had to say to, to Moses more than once, is God with us or not? Now, I don't know if you believe in the devil or not. I'm not sure I do as an independent force in the universe. But um, in, in the story that Nancy and Ron just read, it might just be our own little human voice kind of uh, needling us. So what happens when that little voice comes to us and says, well, maybe that, that sureness and that certainty and that Ooh, that wonderful, warm feeling. Maybe that was just all in your mind. That was just a projection of what you need from the universe. And, and you see how, how this voice, though, that Nancy portrayed so well, um, was always trying to sow a little bit of mistrust in this young man who had just come up out of the water in baptism and going, well, maybe, maybe if, if you just worship me, you know, see, I have all the kingdoms of the world. Isn't, isn't that a great comment on the world's political realities. Um, maybe, or, or, you know, think about how hungry you are right now. You haven't eaten in a long, long time, 40 days. That's a long fast. I uh, know in Alcoholics Anonymous, they say you're, that word halt. Do you remember hearing that if you have a friend or a neighbor or yourself who's involved in the program? H-A-L-T is when you're most vulnerable, when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. So pay attention to yourself when you get to those stages. So he's very, very hungry. He hasn't eaten anything in 40 years. You're very vulnerable when you're like that. And you're going to pick up, you know, a little thing to needle yourself with, like, oh, a little doubt, a little, and, uh, you know, these little things don't, don't weigh very much. When you start carrying them for a while, and you're just carrying them along, and you're thinking about, ooh, I, I don't know about that closeness with God. I don't... I don't know about that mission that God has for me. It won't take very long until you're shown the picture of the woman like that. And if you've been in the developing world, this one's from Ethiopia, but I remember seeing women walking to market with huge bundles of sticks. It's a lot to carry. Each one of them, little at a time, isn't much. When you carry so many of these doubts and fears and uh, mistrust experiences. Don't panic, though. It's just a test. Each one of them is just a test, isn't it? When God drives us out into the wilderness, we can become lost and become frightened, but it's really important to remind ourselves not to panic. It's just a test. If you, you've heard that sound. You may have heard this sound in the last few weeks, you know. I was going to play it for you off electronically, but it's illegal because of our live stream. <laughs> this is a test of the emergency broadcast system. If this were a real emergency, these, this sound would have been sounded, you know, would have been followed by in specific instructions. But this is just a test. You've heard that before. I heard it just a couple weeks ago. It wasn't a test because it was that terrible windstorm with the rain and we had the flash flooding and everything else. It's the weather, it's been so global weirding. But um, it's really important for us when we get those needling experiences to remind ourselves that God is just testing us and we don't need to panic. We don't need to worry. Because Jesus is walking with us and Jesus has already been through it. And we don't have to be there alone. This testing can strengthen us, it can embolden us, it can teach us that we are resilient, that we have resources that we didn't know we had, that we have a community, we have others we can turn to. We are not alone. We are not alone. And yet, we do wander. What would it be like if we never did, were tested, if our faith was always sure, but we were always comforted and kind of coddled? Maybe we wouldn't really be tough to face the real challenges that our uh, world gives to us. I remember the very first time that I volunteered as a camp counselor. I did a lot of camping. I still am a quite a good camper. 
This was my first summer out of seminary. I was 26 years old. I had just moved out to Chicago, a completely new part of the country. I had never lived there before. I was a complete stranger. But the conference had a wilderness canoe program for senior highs up in the Quetico Provincial Park in Canada. It's just north of Minnesota. Any of you ever been there? Well, it's, it's pretty flat, but the glacier carved out all these lakes. It's all lakes. And they're connected with little streams. So you end up paddling down lakes, and then you have to pop your canoe on top of your head um, and portage to the next little lake. And that's how you get from place to place. Well, um, so I was asked by a ministry colleague to join him as the female counselor for a two-week wilderness canoe camp. So as it happened, as we got closer to the day we were supposed to leave, no girls had signed up. So it was myself and the male counselor and nine boys. <laughs> All high school, mostly farm kids from out in the Illinois countryside. So um, we rode, loaded up some rented school buses and I got my school bus driver's license, Anthony, he's been working on his, um, <laughs> to in order to drive the school bus. And we took all the seats out of one of them and loaded it full of canoes. And, and the, all the other ones, we put hammocks between the, um, so that, all right, we got in at 7 p.m. and we drove north. And uh, the kids got into the hammocks about midnight and fell asleep. And we drove all night, the rest of the staff. We stopped in uh, Duluth, Minnesota at 4 a.m. at the Perkins, that was a, a tradition for coffee. And then at 7 a.m. we arrived in Ely, Minnesota, and we got out our permits and we loaded up our 80-pound packs with uh, cooking gear and freestyle meals, and I even took on an old guitar. Not that one, a really old beat it up one, in a, in a bag, in a gar garbage bag for campfires and songs. So it's just a wilderness, there's no campsites, per se. All we had was a compass and a map and a permit from the Canadian government to be out for the next 12 days. So we navigated to, to each canoe, paddling down the lake, small and large, and portaging, and, and uh, we set our own course. And every morning we drew straws to see who would uh, be each other's partner in the canoe. I was always chosen last because I was the only person who could not carry both an 80-pound pack and a canoe. I could do one or the other, but not both. <laughs> so that person would have to do two portages when they're stuck with me. But by the end of the canoe trip, I had been in a canoe with every single of one of my brothers, and they had poured out their heart to, to me. I'm sitting in the front so they couldn't see my face and just told me their whole life story. Uh, many tears, many hopes, many dreams, many fears. Uh, well, one day, it was a great trip, really enjoyed it. We did 175 miles in nine days. That's a lot on the canoe. One day, it dawned rainy and cold. I was off for taking a day to rest in the tent and read and play my guitar, but this group of guys want to make tracks. So we shoved off right through this swamp that you could not paddle through. This swamp was way over my head in depth, and it was about the consistency of cold pea soup. And it smelled really bad. And you couldn't, you couldn't paddle through it because there were so many logs laying crossways. So you had to swim, but kind of climb up over the logs and hang onto your canoe over here and have all your gear in there. And you're climbing up over and you're getting it in your hair and in your mouth and up your sleeves because you had to wear a cloak because it was cold. And um, it was not much fun. Eight hours we did this through the swamp. And we were so tired. And it's pouring rain, pouring, pouring rain through the whole thing. And um, finally, we're peering at our map and our compass through the driving rain. And we came to what we thought would be our destination. And we pulled our canoes up on the island. And we flopped down on the shore, exhausted. And we realized, with this terrible sinking feeling in our stomach, that it was the same darn island we had left that morning. Oh, no. And we looked at the map again, and that island did not have a name. But now it does, Deja Vu Island. 
So we fell asleep, exhausted, smelling terrible, but we just didn't bother trying to clean up. There's really no way to do it. And uh, of course, in the morning, we had to do the same thing again. We had to go through the same swamp again. Luckily, the weather was a little better, and we were able to make sure we didn't make the wrong turn again, so we would end up at the same island again, and actually end up on the lake we were trying to find, and we did it successfully. But there will be times of testing. Have you ever been there in that kind of situation in a relationship? Maybe in your relationship with God, where you just feel like you took a wrong turn somewhere, you can't, it's like a tape loop, it's like Groundhog Day, over and over and over again, you've seen that movie, and you can't get out of it, and uh, maybe it's a test. You have to remember, don't panic, it's just a test. It's a test. And Jesus is with us through those tests. There will be times of testing, times to test our faith, our souls, our commitments, our community. The Spirit drives us into the world, wilderness in order to be tested. To see if we know those six little words, I am sorry, please forgive me. And we can say them really sincerely without that eye roll. Without that testing, where would we be? What would our faith be like? Marshmallows are not good for anything except to melt in a nice mug of hot cocoa by a campfire. When we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, we pray, lead us not into temptation. Or today we'll sing it, save us from the time of trial. There is a grace in that prayer. And also we read the words of Paul the Apostle in Corinth chapter 10. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, God will also provide the way out so that you will be able to endure it. The way out is not so much a buy, a cancellation of the test, as it is a new revelation of a resource or a resilience or a relationship, or maybe all three, that you didn't know you had. I'm sure every single one of us has had that experience. Grace upon grace. May the tests you face this Lenten season and beyond open your eyes to God's grace revealed to you through hard testing. God will provide both the test and the way out. And I'd like to finish with a blessing that came from a book that you gave me, Reverend Janice. It's called Blessing That Meets You in the Wilderness. i Jan Richardson. After the desert stillness, after the wrestling, after the hours and days and weeks of emptying, after the hungering and the thirsting, after the opening and seeing and knowing, let this blessing be the first sweetness that touches your lips the bread that falls into your arms, the cup that welcoming hands press into yours. Let this blessing be the road that returns you. Let it be the strength to carry the wilderness home. Amen. And now in this congregation, if you're a visitor here today, one of our guests who may not um, have experienced this, and you're welcome to just uh, not if you don't want to, but some of us like to get up and go around and greet everyone in the room. Uh, you may stay right in your seat if you'd like and do a fist bump. You can just say hello. You don't have to say anything. But we certainly do uh, want to extend to you and to everyone here the peace of Christ be with each one of us.
As we continue in worship, we're going to sing Spirit Song, which the words will be on your screen. If you want to look at the music, it's in the hardback hymnal at number 347. right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you almighty god creator of heaven and earth you brought all things into being and called them good from the dust of the earth you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life when we turned away and our love failed your love remained steadfast when rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters and saved Noah and his family and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people abandoned your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still, small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to us, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for us, you raised him to life and presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days and exalted him at your right hand. 
By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, as we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and grace to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. After having given thanks to you, he gave the bread to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in memory of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Oh God, we just ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine that may, they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Till so Christ comes in final victory, and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In this congregation, as in all United Methodist churches, we practice an open table. That means if this is the first time you've come, or if you've been coming here with your family for many generations, then please um, feel that this table is especially set for you. We have um, gluten-free bread, and our cup is grape juice, both cups. And when you come forward, you will come forward by the aisles, um, you will take a piece of bread and just dip it in the cup and eat it right then. And then you may stay here at the altar for prayer afterward if you would like. Um, and everyone is welcome to come and partake at this time. Sir,
service is going to continue in just a moment with some prayer. And after Debbie does our regular prayers, we're going to sing the Lord's Prayer today. Uh, it's in the book, but it's one of those songs that's actually easier to sing if you're not looking at it. So um, I'm going to have you just sing after me. Chris and Melora are going to be singing the, uh, the people parts. We'll hear, we'll hear Debbie's prayer first. Let us join together in an attitude of prayer. Most gracious and merciful God, we thank you for the beautiful day, for the sun that shines so brightly. We're reminded as we're in it that you have endless love for all of us. And we're reminded as we see it that you shine a bright light on everything that we bring to you. All our joys, all our sorrows, all the things we do wrong, all the places where we need forgiveness for relationships we've broken or hurt, relationships we haven't formed or relationships that we've somehow skewed. We know that you see all that has wounded us, all the places where we need to forgive, all those tests that you put in front of us, and all those burdens that we carry that sometimes keep us from you. And in the sunlight, we're reminded that you can cover all, shine a brightness on all, that your love will take care of all. We ask you for health and healing for those who suffer illness, for those who are at the end of their earthly life, We ask for hope for their families. We ask for our community that we might be a healthy, supportive group of residents who can lift up those among us who suffer, who can help through our many wonderful agencies, and in our personal interactions with those who, who need our care. We ask that we can receive care when we need it. We ask for our politicians, that they might be wise and generous and led by love. We ask for your graciousness as we know those who've suffered from the chaos of bomb threats, our Jewish brothers and sisters, our Muslim brothers and sisters. We ask for forgiveness for those who look to create that kind of chaos, that their hearts might be turned and led to love. We ask for help for all those who are touched by natural disaster, by man-made disaster. And God, we keep coming back to the love that shines on us and that we in turn are asked to shine on others. May it be so. Amen. Sing after me.
At this time, we will um, ask the ushers to bring the uh, gifts forward, and we'll sing uh, Care's Chorus. You can remain seated for this as well. It's also in the black book, but it's the words will be on the screen. God, my feet. you got to stand up on your feet to sing this song. <laughs> this will help us keep on going in our wandering and our journeying together. Guide my feet while I run this race. Spaghetti dinner, it's not work, it's so much fun, which is uh, different things that you can do to join together and get to know people differently when you're working together. So that's our action step for this week, besides signing up also for the forgiveness studies. As you're going out to coffee hour, as you're on your left side, there'll be a bulletin board, and there's all those sign-up sheets there for classes. There's six different classes. I'm sure you'll find one that will work for you. Go forth on your journey. May you be blessed, even as you wander, even as you are testing. May you be saved from hard testing, but even as you are tested, even as you wander. May you be blessed, and you will be blessed with the presence of our triune God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, walking with you and supporting you all the way. Be blessed.